What is up? In today's video, we're going over 20 eye myths, debunking some of the common myths about eyes. Let's get in. What is up guys and welcome back. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I am an ophthalmologist and oculoplastic surgery fellow. Today we're going over 20 eye myths. We're debunking some of the common myths about vision, eyes. Let's get into it. So this is from the American Academy of Ophthalmology's website's 20 eye myths. We're gonna go over them. I will link to the article from the American Academy of Ophthalmology in the description down below if you wanna check it out. If you do find this video interesting, go ahead and leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, go ahead and check me out on Instagram, Dr. Eyeball MD. I show you all kinds of cool surgery videos cool stuff about ophthalmology, a life in medicine, life of a doctor. So go check out Dr. Eyeball MD on Instagram and the On Call with Dr. Keenum podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the places. Let's get into the list. Myth number one, all babies are born with blue eyes. So while babies may be born with lighter color eyes and then develop darker eyes, that can just be because the melanin and the pigment in their iris is developing during the first year of life. And so it can take some time for the eyes to darken. So really blue eyes are the absence of melanin. They're the absence of pigment within the iris, the colored part of the eye but as it develops, the eye can darken as the baby ages. Myth number two, babies are born with their eyes fully grown. So babies' eyes are pretty large when they're born, but they're not full size. They're about two thirds the size of an adult eye. Myth number three, two brown-eyed parents cannot have a blue-eyed baby. So this is a myth because there are a lot of genes that actually go into making up a person's eye color. It's not simple Mendelian genetics. It's a little more complicated. There's a lot of genes that go into it. So you can't actually Actually predict it with certainty based off of the parents eye color so that is in fact a myth myth number four eating carrots will improve vision so this is not entirely a myth carrots have vitamin A but you really get your vitamin A from a lot of other sources and you don't need that much of it for the eyes so you don't need to be just eating carrots all day long to improve your vision and eating more carrots past a point is not going to improve your vision you just need to get your baseline vitamin a so this is in part a myth i actually have another video on this this actually goes back to world war ii and it has to do with german pilots and british pilots tricking each other it's a cool video go check it myth number five you can exercise your eyes to improve your vision so i made another video about this it has over a quarter million views and you guys just went crazy in the comments telling me why i was wrong but typically doing eye exercise did not actually improve the vision you can improve something called convergence and sufficiency which is the difficulty with converging and focusing on something at near so you can improve that to some extent and you can strengthen the accommodative power of the eye but just moving the eyes around looking in different directions is not going to improve the actual visual acuity of the eye it's just not the way the biology of the eye is made up so unfortunately eye exercises do not improve vision to a great extent I know you guys are gonna go crazy in the comments with that one, so have at it. Myth number six, sun gazing is good for your vision. It is absolutely the opposite and you should not be staring at the sun unless you have special glasses that are made for solar gazing. These are ones that you might look at an eclipse with. If you remember, we had an eclipse a few years ago and all these glasses went out of stock basically because people wanted to look at the sun during the eclipse, but any other type of sun gazing should not be done. Staring at the sun can cause something called solar retinopathy. It will essentially burn a hole in your retina, in your macula. I've seen this, it is irreversible and it will leave a blind spot. Don't stare at the sun, it is not a good idea. Myth number seven, if you cross your eyes, they're going to stay that way. This is not true. Crossing your eyes is not going to make them stay that way permanently, no matter what your mother told you when you were little. Now there is something called strabismus where babies may be born with cross-eyed or you can develop it for other reasons later on and this can be repaired with things like strabismus surgery, either as a child or as an adult. But just crossing your eyes like this is not going to cause them to stay that way. Myth number eight, only boys can be colorblind. This isn't true, girls can be colorblind as well. It is more common in boys, however. And myth number nine, going off of that, people who are colorblind see in black and white. That's actually typically not true. That is a rare form of colorblindness. Typically people can see some colors, just not all the shades or maybe can't distinguish them as well. So complete colorblindness where you see in grayscale is actually pretty uncommon. Myth number 10, sitting close to the TV can damage your eyes. This isn't true. Again, no matter what your mom may have told you when you were little, sitting close to the TV is not going to permanently damage your eyes. It can cause eye strain if you're accommodating a lot to focus it near, but it's not going to damage the 
the eyes. And I get a lot of patients asking me after surgeries that we'll do, like cataract surgery or even oculoplastic surgeries, if they can go back to using their, iPod, their iPads or their phones or watching TV, if this is gonna affect it. It affects your eyes in no way. It's not going to hurt it. However, if a child is sitting really close to the TV rather than telling them they shouldn't do this because it's gonna hurt their eyes, it might be a good idea to have them get an eye exam because they may actually be very nearsighted and just need to be close to the TV to actually see. So they may actually need glasses like I did when I was a kid. Myth number 11, reading in dim light is harmful to your eyes. This is actually not true. So reading in dim light is gonna make it more difficult to read, obviously, but it's not gonna harm your eyes. It's not bad for your eyes. Just have to rely on those rod cells a little more to gather that light, but it's not gonna cause any harm or any permanent damage to the eyes. Myth number 12, using computers can damage your eyes. This is not true. Again, accommodating it near where the lens has to relax and become more round shaped so that you can focus on a near object can cause eye strain because it requires constriction of the ciliary body, the ciliary muscle. So it actually requires constriction of a muscle in the eye to focus it near. And so focusing it near constantly can cause that muscle to to basically tire out. And so that can cause eye strain, eye fatigue. So it's a good idea if you're doing a lot of near work to just look off into the distance for 20 seconds, every 10 to 20 minutes or so, just to give the eyes a break and let them relax. Staring at the computer is not going to damage the eyes. Myth number 13, people who wear glasses are going to ruin their eyes if they do a lot of close-up work. This isn't true, again, for the same reason. Our eyes are made to see at many distances, and that's going to change as we age and we develop presbyopia and lose the ability to have our good reading vision as that lens doesn't wanna accommodate as much and become that more spheroid shape. But people who wear glasses, if they do a lot of close-up work or read fine print, are not gonna damage their eyes from this. Myth number 14, wearing glasses or contact lenses is going to make you dependent on them. Typically, people who are wearing glasses or contact lenses are wearing them because they already have some refractive error, whether that be myopia, hyperopia, or a stigmatism that the lenses are correcting. So it's more that you just need them moving forward. It's not so much that you're becoming dependent on them. It's just that that's what you need at baseline. And so you're gonna have to wear them. Now, I know you guys are gonna argue this point a lot for children, and there may be some variability in kids in terms of becoming dependent on glasses, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. Myth number 15, wearing the wrong glasses will hurt your eyes. So if you're wearing the wrong prescription, is this going to damage your eyes? No, it's not going to damage the eyes. It may give you a headache. It may cause eye strain if you're trying to accommodate over it, but it's not going to damage the eyes. It's not going to harm the eyes permanently in any way. You just need to get the right prescription, basically. Myth number six, myth number 16, learning disabilities are caused by eye problems. So this is not really true. Now, the inability to see in class or see the board may lead to fall, falling behind in class, but eye problems themselves are not going to lead to a true learning disability. It may just make it more difficult to keep up and actually see what's going on in class, but it won't lead to a learning disability. Myth number 17, and I wanna make a whole video on this, and that is that losing vision is an inevitable part of aging. So I get a lot of patients and they say, I'm just getting old and can't see anymore. And while you will develop things like cataracts, everybody's going to develop a gradual change in the color of the natural lens of the eyes. They age going from clear to a more yellowish brown. As we age, it will cause the vision to decrease. So this is in part true, but that's completely correctable with cataract surgery. And so there's no reason that you can't be 90 years old and have decent vision, assuming you don't have any bad eye pathology. So, so just becoming old does not mean that you automatically are not going to see well. You just have to treat the reasons that come with aging that cause the vision to decrease. And again, a lot of these are completely treatable. So as we lose our near vision with aging, typically around the age of 45 or so, that's called presbyopia, we lose the ability to accommodate and read it near. And that can be corrected with reading glasses, corrective lenses, or with cataract surgery. And then when you develop cataracts, also that can be corrected. Now things like macular degeneration and glaucoma are serious eye diseases that can lead to irreversible damage to the eye and irreversible vision loss, but aging in and of itself does not automatically mean that you need to not see well. Myth number 18, a cataract needs to be ripe in order to be removed. Now, it's probably better to wait until the cataract is visually significant before you go doing a surgery. You don't wanna remove a lens from someone's eye if it's working and functioning properly. But you really also don't want to let it get so bad that someone really can't function. So once they start having visual functional problems that limit their ability to do things like drive or do things that they want to do in their activities of daily living, then the cataract can be removed. It doesn't have to ripen to a certain stage necessarily before it can be removed. Once the functional complaints of the patient become bad enough, we can remove the cataract and improve their vision back to something that allows them to do what they want to do in life. 
Myth number 19, eyes can be transplanted. This unfortunately is not true yet. Now there are parts of the eye that we can transplant. Now that includes the cornea. Now there are parts of the eye that we can transplant like the cornea, so you can do corneal transplants or partial corneal transplants, but unfortunately, because of the way the optic nerve works, it's kind of like the spinal cord of the eye. So if you sever it, it really doesn't wanna work by putting a new one attached to it. It'd be kind of like cutting off someone's head, sticking a new one on and hoping that the spinal cord connected and worked. Unfortunately, we're just not there yet with modern medicine. Not to say people aren't trying this with mice and working on this, but we're just not there yet. So as of now, we can't transplant eyeballs in total. And myth number 20, all eye doctors are the same. So a lot of people really don't understand the difference in the types of eye doctors. So there's opticians. These are the people that you go uh, and see at the eyeglasses store, like a lens crafters or a Walmart or anywhere they make glasses. Those are the opticians, they fit you for the glasses. Optometrists are the ones that go to optometry school, which is four years of school after college, and they prescribe glasses, they do refractions, they can treat eye diseases, uh, but they don't do surgery typically in most states. Now, ophthalmologists are doctors that go to medical school, like myself, and after medical school, then go on to do an ophthalmology residency, which is four years in total, and then can go on to do further fellowships like I've done in oculoplastic surgery. So ophthalmologists are medical doctors, and that is kind of the basic difference between the different types of eye doctors. All right, guys, I hope you like that. I know you guys are gonna go crazy in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong about a lot of these, but it's good to have this discussion and people can give their opinions. And so go at it down in the comments. I hope you guys like this. Check out the article on the American Academy of Ophthalmology's website. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.